In STAD Pro 2023, you can create enclosed zones to apply a perpendicular area load to supporting members. An enclosed zone differs from an area or floor load type in how the area is defined and how the load distribution is calculated. And this includes the ability to define openings within your load boundary, select members to ignore when forming the loading panel, and to select members to ignore for load transfer. So let's go ahead and get started. In the workflow page control area, go ahead and select your loading tab and take a look at your load and definition dialog. This should also bring up your loading tab in the ribbon toolbar. Now to model loads using the enclosed zone option, you're gonna follow a two-step procedure. You're first gonna define the enclosed zone and then you're gonna apply an enclosed zone load. Let's start with step number one and define the enclosed zone. To do that, go to your loading tab and the ribbon toolbar and click on the enclosed zone icon. Now in STAD Pro 2023, you can create multiple enclosed zones and you can go ahead and name them through this dialog. For now, I'm only going to create one zone. To create the boundary of the zone, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the select button move this dialog to the side, and then I'm gonna draw a closed polygon on my model. Once I've created my closed polygon, I can go ahead and officially add this zone. So click the Add button, and then we're gonna go ahead and click Close for now. Here we can see that the boundary of the new zone has been created, and we can see it in this darker blue color. Now let's say we want to move on to step number two, which is to imply an enclosed zone load to this zone. First, you're going to go ahead and select the load case for which this load should be modeled. Then, you can go up to the loading tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on your load items icon. In the create new load items dialog, select the enclosed zone option, and then you can select the appropriate zone. After that, you're gonna enter your intensity. Now, all loads will be according to the global Y axis, either in the positive or negative direction. For my particular model, this is a downward acting force. So I'm gonna say it's a negative 0.01 kips per square foot. Once we're done, let's go ahead and click the Add button and click Close. After you apply the enclosed zone load, you can go ahead and review the load and its distribution on your screen by selecting the load in the load case details section. Now here on my screen, I should be able to see the tributary areas that were used to distribute that pressure load to each of the supporting members. As you can see, the default is to use a two-way load distribution. Now let's go ahead and say that I would like to not distribute this load in two ways. I want to go with a one-way load distribution. I want it to distribute to my infill beams, which will then transfer this load to my girders. I can edit this enclosed zone definition to ignore certain members for load transfer, and this can force the load into a one-way loading situation. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. And I'm going to expand my enclosed zone load definition highlight zone number one, and then click on the edit button. Here I'm gonna find the option to ignore members or loads on members. And I'm gonna go with this, ignore members for load transfer. I can click on the select button, move this out of the way, and then graphically select the members on my model I would like to ignore for load transfer. I'm gonna select all of my girders, which for this particular model, I'm gonna say those are the members that are parallel to my global X axis. Once you're done, go ahead and click on that modify button and then click close. Now you can always review the changes you made 
to your enclosed zone. So let's go back to this definitions area and highlight zone number one again. Now again, the perimeter or boundary of that enclosed zone will be in this darker blue color. Anything or any member that you decided to ignore for load transfer will be in a lighter blue color. So everything looks appropriate to me. Now I'm going to return back to my zone load and I can see that the loads have changed, the hatching has changed, the tributary areas have changed to make this a one-way load distribution, which is exactly what I was looking for. Now let's take this a step further and let's assume that maybe one of these bays within this framing system is acting as an opening. So I don't want any load within that particular area. Let's return to zone number one and let's add an opening. Let's go ahead and click the edit button. We'll go to the openings option and then we're going to select the opening on screen by creating a closed polygon from existing nodes. Once we're done, let's go ahead and click on the Modify button and then click Close. And we should be able to see our opening now in green. Here I can go to my zone area and I can see that the loading has changed. To see this in a more convenient view, you can also take a look at this from the top and we can see that there's no hatching in the area that I've defined as an opening. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this other area of framing. And what I'm looking at here is I want to also add an enclosed zone here at this same level, but just for this particular area. I also want to tell the program to ignore these horizontal bracing member when forming the loading panel. So let's create a new zone. In my ribbon toolbar, click on the loading tab and click on your enclosed zone icon. Here I'm going to create zone number two, and let's go ahead and select one on our model. Again, creating a closed polygon. Once we're done, let's go ahead and click the Add button and click Close. And here we can see zone number two and zone number one is still there. Now let's go ahead and apply a load to this zone. I'm going to identify my load case tell the program I want to create a new load item. I'm going to select the enclosed zone option and this time I'm going to select zone number two and let's go ahead and enter the intensity. I'm going to click the add button and then I'm going to click close and I should be able to see all of my loads in my model. Now as mentioned previously I want to go ahead and tell the program to ignore those bracing members. And you can see here that automatically every member within that plane is going to be assumed to take some of that tributary area of that load. And that's not exactly what I'm looking for in this case. So I'm going to tell the program to go ahead and ignore those members. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go ahead and edit zone number two. Here I'm going to select the ignore members and I'm going to ignore members for panel formation. This will tell the program that those members do not count as far as the tributary load calculations go. Let's go ahead and click on the select option and I'm going to go ahead and select my bracing members. I'll go ahead and hit on the modify button and then click close and I should be able to see the updated load distribution. Again, to see this a little bit more clearly, we can go ahead and review the tributary areas on those members. Now I could take this a step further and say this is also acting as a one-way load, but I'm gonna go ahead and keep the two-way loading distribution for zone number two. At this point, this concludes our process for utilizing the new enclosed zone load option that is now available in STAD Pro 2023. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.